capitalism is all about, you know, the survival of the fittest. So again, that does lead to feelings of isolation, feelings of, you know, me versus the world. It can be very toxic to constantly feel like that's the world that you live in. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Roshni and I'm glad that you joined me today. So today I wanted to talk about a little bit of a heavier topic and that is actually capitalism and mental health. So um, there's definitely a pretty big correlation between the two and we can all say that like a job search can make us feel really bad because it's f filled with rejection um, or getting fired or being laid off can feel really bad. Um, you know, there's so many ups and downs emotionally that comes with the job search that makes it not just um, something that you're doing, but it is really tied into you emotionally, whether that's, you know, graduating from school or achieving a certification or getting a degree or, you know, um, having like your first big break. There's so many parts of a career or even a regular job that can kind of take you through these emotional ups and downs. And I just wanted to talk about that today. Um, it's kind of something that I've been going through, but it's been something that we've all dealt with um, many different phases and I've worked, you know, at so many different kinds of jobs. And I feel like I just have a lot of experience in terms of, um, the highs and the lows that it can bring you. So um, I wanted to start by talking about a couple of studies that I looked into. So I'll put the sources up on the screen. Um, I'm pretty sure this first one is a Medium article that referenced a bunch of other studies as well, and I'll link it in the description below. Um, but what this article pretty much said is that um, there's just so much more constant pressure uh, for, for people in the workforce in this day and age. And uh, they actually said that um, we even, so for anyone who's making a decent amount of money in 2019, and especially in America, they say that on average, these people work more than medieval peasants. And it's crazy because when we think about that time period, we think about um, how much, you know, we've grown or evolved, but to think that we're spending more time working now, despite all the technology that we created to make it easier and to make things less work, we've actually kind of reversed that. And now technology is just one of our forms of work. There's so many different jobs that um, now basically force you to maintain some sort of public persona. Um, I remember, you know, when Facebook and MySpace were coming out, how big of a deal it was to, you know, for anyone to have any kind of job that um, had pictures of themselves drinking, even if they were of age or just kind of um, any sort of pictures like people were for a long time really firing people over, you know, Facebook pictures or MySpace pictures. And so um, coming from that all the way till now, like our presence on social media and how we represent ourselves in the world has now trickled into the kind of jobs that we get and into this kind of idea of professionalism. So it's really interesting to see that crossover and that kind of makes the work just go on forever. You know, if, um, something is true to you but might not be true to your professional life or might not be condoned by your specific company or by a contract that you're under, then you have to refrain from that, you know? And so there's a lot of overlap between um, social media, creating a personal brand, creating a professional brand, creating a social brand. Um, and that in itself is really important to um, to realize. And so the article was also saying that because of that correlation, we feel like we're always working. We feel like we never really have a break. It also kind of makes you look at other people as stepping stones. So we don't really appreciate the quality of certain relationships because we feel like we're in competition with one another. Um, the last thing that was a major point in the article was that um, all of our, a lot of our jobs give us kind of a lack of fulfillment um, or purpose. So we don't really feel like we are you know, fulfilling ourselves or that we're getting anything out of our job. So you just kind of feel like you're giving, giving, giving all the time. Um, and, you know, it, it makes you feel like you're facing an uphill battle that's never going to end because you are just, you're not getting anything back, but you constantly have to give. And then you rely on that to pay your bills or to do the things that you love. And so it just kind of becomes like this impossible cycle that's really hard to break out of. Um, and then the second article 
was actually just a study itself and again I'll put the resources up on the screen and I'll link it in the description below but it was talking about how capitalism as a whole basically makes you aware of the oppression and the discrimination in the world right even if you personally um, don't feel bad that you don't have a college degree or you don't feel like you regret not going to college or something like that the world if you're in a job search there's so many more jobs that require degrees where you might not even really be using your degree directly but it's just that a box that you have to check so that's just one example of how you can be you know oppressed or face discrimination in your uh, job search or just in the uh, in the field of capitalism because you're constantly kind of put in this hierarchy so even if you started really behind and you've come from you know you've come a really long way and done a lot from where you started other people could start where you ended up and just end up continuing further. So, so it makes you hyper aware of all of the oppression and discrimination that exists in the world. Um, and the other thing is that that then affects your mental health, right? You feel like you're not good enough. You feel like you don't have enough. You feel like your lack of money, your lack of opportunities in your childhood really affected you. And so you kind of go down this rabbit hole of regretting things or resenting things or wishing that it was different. And that also isn't really going to help when what you need to focus on is the present or how you can move on from here right but it kind of creates like this this battle between yourself um, and you might not even feel that way originally but then it makes you confront these things that you didn't even realize you were lacking if that makes sense um, so another point that this study made is that it actually changes what it means to fundamentally be human, right? So like in the Medium article talking about using people as a stepping stone, um, it's basically the same thing. You feel like you're constantly in competition with one another. You don't feel like you can bond. And humans are communicators for a reason, right? We, we've built societies based on talking to each other and figuring out how we can help one another. And, you know, that's kind of what the early days of humanity was built upon, right? Like we all had our own role, even with like a hunter and gatherer type of example, you know, some people went out and hunted, some people gathered, some people made clothes, some people, you know, to, to help to take care of, um, siblings or children and everyone had their own role but one wasn't necessarily better than the other right they all kind of helped work to this common goal and at the end of the day people felt taken care of because all those roles were being fulfilled whereas now in this capitalistic society everyone's trying to beat each other for a certain role or for a certain job and so instead of celebrating our differences or celebrating you know what we um, can do together it becomes really isolating and you just focus on what you have or what you don't have and it becomes all about yourself instead of about how you have certain strengths and weaknesses that can complement someone else's strengths and weaknesses. So you kind of lose that when it comes to capitalism. And then because of that, you you kind of view yourself and question yourself from a certain framework, right? So even if you felt like you personally made the right decision by not going to school or that you don't regret regret not going, if you end up without a job, you know, in five or 10 years and you're realizing that you just need a degree where it might not even fully apply. You can still, you still feel like you have to view yourself from this framework of not being good enough or not being strong enough or not being qualified enough when maybe you had invaluable life experiences during that time and that's why you don't regret it. But now you have to see yourself from this perspective that you're less educated or that you haven't done enough because you just chose to live your life differently than someone else. And that then affects your um, ability to get a job or your ability to keep progressing within a company and things like that. Um, so that's how you start to see yourself from this other perspective that maybe you don't even agree with, but you have to see yourself from that to survive. And that was kind of the last point is that capitalism is all about, you know, the survival of the fittest. So again, that does lead to feelings of isolation, feelings of, you know, me versus the world. And it's just, it can be very toxic to constantly feel like that's the world that you live in. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about how to kind of deal with this. And obviously, you know, it, it'd be great if I could say, oh, let's just eradicate capitalism and change this into a whole new world. But that's not going to happen, um, at least not so quickly. I wanted to just give you some advice on how you can navigate this system and kind of pull your mental health um, and your emotions out of it a little bit. So one of the first things that I wanted to say is to remember who your loyalty is towards, right? So um, your loyalty, when it comes to the 
job world should definitely be to yourself. And yes, you should have loyalty towards your company. You should, you know, not share confidential information and not break contracts and things like that. But when it comes to, you know, not using any of your sick days for four years or, you know, not um, taking any vacations because you could be working or you could be doing more. Don't give so much of yourself. Like don't so extend yourself because when it hits you that that company, you know, that they still chose someone else instead of you for a promotion or they brought someone in from outside of the company to take that spot that you've been working so hard for. You know, there's so many situations that could happen where the rug just kind of gets pulled out from under you, whether it's that you're taken off a project or you don't get a promotion or um, someone doesn't vouch for you like they say they will. And so it ends up kind of building this idea of resentment, but you don't realize that until you get to the point of not getting something that you want and whenever you are putting in so much work usually it's because you expect something at the end you know you say oh well you know what maybe I'll haven't used my sick days in five years but that's because I'm getting that promotion or that's because I'm I'm getting you know to cover that crazy event or or whatever it is that you want and unless you explicitly know that for a fact and it's written down somewhere and you know, it, it was presented to you and you signed on to something like that, for the most part, you really can't trust that that's going to happen. Anything could happen and you could essentially just completely lose out on that time altogether. And if it gets to the end of the year and you don't use however many sick days you had, that's not money that goes back into your pocket. They just go away and you start over most of the time. So it really makes it difficult to... Um, to continue on after you've been burned like that time and time again. And it's not like we stop working when we're 25 or 30 or even 40. We Most people stop working into their 60s. And recently it's gotten even later into 70s and 80s just because of how expensive it is to live these days. And along with that, I just want to talk about setting boundaries um, because it's really, really important that you set some sort of boundary, whether it's just with yourself or whether you need to explicitly tell someone that there is something that you just can't take on, like another project or um, a certain time that you just can't be on your email like there's so many different ways that you can set boundaries um if you are you know at a nine to five type of job then don't keep replying to emails until 8 p.m at night unless that's one of the things that's explicitly in your job description you know what i mean um so it's important that you find those places where you can take back a little bit of that time or energy and along with setting boundaries a really good time to set them is before you start on a on a new role um so once you're you know being brought on to a job you can ask those questions during a job interview or um during the the offer acceptance process you can say you know will i be expected to xyz is it okay if i xyz and that's why you're supposed to be interviewing the company as well as them interviewing you. And so many people get lost in that in the job process because all you think is, you know, I'm desperate, I need a job, I'll take anything, blah, blah, blah. But you need to make sure that that's somewhere where you're willing to spend your time and willing to spend your energy. Not every job does fully give back to you. And sometimes the job is just a job and that's okay. Whether it's you know, saying that you're not going to go to the holiday Christmas party this year, or you're just going to, you know, not be able to be reached after 7 or 8 p.m. Like, there's so many things that you can do um, to, to take that time for yourself. It's really important, especially when you're not at work, to make use of that time for something else, right? So whether it's, you know, being creative or just playing and having fun with, like, your friends or your family, just kind of, like, losing yourself in that, um, or even um, just doing nothing, you know, spending time literally doing nothing. Like, we all know the feeling when you get out of the shower and you just sit around in your towel for, like, two hours straight, right? Like, I've definitely done that before. Sometimes you just need that time to... to literally just do nothing and it's okay to spend some time not being productive like we constantly get funneled into this system of doing things before you get to work and then working all day and then coming home and doing a side hustle and working on something else and it's just like the cycle is endless so until you decide that you're worth enough to take some time away from yourself that cycle is just going to continue and especially when it comes to a job or something like that sometimes when you get things done really really quick and you do them really really well everyone just says oh she'll get it done and they just kind of put more and more and more stuff on your plate and then you don't realize until you're completely overextended that it was actually because you were such a good employee that you took so much on and then now you're pretty much left with no energy and no room to breathe because everything got thrown your way because hey you get things done quick and you do it well and so it's it's important to realize that there's a line that they can't 
cross. There's a, a certain, you know, boundary that you need in order to be able to continue at that job and stay there for a long time or take on something else and not feel completely exhausted by the time you step into a new role because you're so burnt out from your last one. So along with the idea of um, not being uh, productive all of the time, it's really important to realize that your value isn't placed in production. And for me being, you know, a, a someone that was already always in extracurriculars and always took, you know, a ton of advanced classes in school and, you know, did the same in college, was always working a job, uh, alongside school like I was always doing so much and it's just what everyone did around me because everyone I knew was also in school or was around my age and it just seemed normal right but then as time goes by and you're taught to you know go to school for eight hours and then work a five-hour shift and then do homework and then have your extracurriculars like we get so ingrained in feeling like our value is from being productive so even if that was that you were you know I was a dancer for 14 years so um you know, I would get patted on the back for getting good grades and for being, you know, a good dancer and for doing a really good job at my, uh, at my actual work and things like that. So you get, you know, all these pats on the back for doing all these things and you forget that you can be a good person without having to always be productive and always having to move forward. And yes, those things are important and it's important to have goals and it is important to move forward, but you can't get so lost in that that you feel like you're not valuable until you're doing something. And I struggle with that a lot. Like I always feel like, oh, you know, it's been a waste of a day because I didn't do anything productive. Like how many times have you heard women say that or other people say that? And it's such a toxic mindset to have in our society because you're saying that taking a vacation isn't worth your time or spending time with family isn't worth your time or just enjoying your friendships isn't worth your time. But those are what makes life so rich and so amazing. And so it's important to remind yourself that even outside of friends and family that you have a value you based on your existence that you have inherent worth that you don't have to be productive to feel like you're worth something or to feel like you're valuable or important to the world if you didn't have a job but something happened to you people would still be heartbroken you know it, it your value in life is not the fact that you're employed your value in life is the fact that you exist and you add something to this world and something else I wanted to touch on is actually the idea of being passionate right so we always hear um, you know ideas about being passionate about your work or that you know if you're passionate about your job you're never really gonna work in a day in your life and of course I believe that it's important to be, feel passionate but even um, our favorite like movie stars or musicians or whoever like you can't say that they never get tired after a show or that they're never exhausted after a press junket or something, you know? Sometimes work is just work, and even if you're living out your best passions and your biggest dreams, there can still be days that are just hard, and there can be days where you're not in love with everything that you're doing, but that's okay. It's still part of, you know, something that you do love and are passionate about, but at the same time, I kind of wanted to talk about the other side and how that can actually be good too. It can actually be okay if you're not passionate about your job because we feel like our jobs are our whole lives, right? You have to be fulfilled by it. You have to be passionate about it. It has to be paying you X amount. You have to get X amount of benefits out of it. Like there, there's so much that we're expecting from our job. And this is the same thing with relationships, right? They, people always talk about how you can't get every thing in the world from your one partner. Sometimes you need other friendships to fulfill certain parts of you, or sometimes you just need other work relationships or, you know, a good relationship with your family. Like there's other needs that you have that need to be met that can't just be met with one person when it comes to a relationship. And it's the same thing with the job. You have other ways of fulfilling those needs. So if you have a job and it's either well-paying or you like who you work with, or, you know, there's things that you're benefiting out of it and you don't feel like you absolutely hate it, it's okay to not be head over heels so passionate about your job because maybe you have hobbies maybe you have places where you volunteer maybe you have a side hustle like there could be anything in the world that you have that you get your passion from and that you feel um you know, creative and stimulated and you can have all these feelings come from another place. Sometimes people feel like that's, you know, the only way that you can feel about your job, but I want you to be really careful and notice where you're holding yourselves back. Um, so, you know, sometimes you can get so set on working in a certain field or a certain industry, or you can get fixated on like a certain salary point, not as your goal, but you're like, oh, I've always made about this much money. So every job I'm a 
going to apply to is going to be in the same salary ballpark, right? Like you're not focused on growing or you're not focused on bettering yourself. And I just want to say that it's really important that you investigate those ideas that you're holding about what work has to mean for you and what kind of work is available to you, what kind of money is available to you. There's all these different components, even even how hostile a job environment has to be, or um, maybe you have limiting beliefs around, you know, work can never be enjoyable. There's so many things that we have learned or um, so many times that you can be traumatized from a job or from, um, you know, losing something that you did love or from, you know, someone beating you out at a at an opportunity. Like there's so many things that can happen that make you kind of reserved or make you not want to, you know, put yourself out there. And it's really, really important that you don't let that get to you because jobs really are a stepping stone, right? Like not everyone looks at it that way, but if you have a a passion and you have a hobby and there's something that you really want to get done, sometimes you just need a job that's going to pay your bills and that's going to bring in a little bit of extra money so that you can save and reinvest that into what your personal passion is, right? Like there's so many opportunities for you to connect the dots dots if you look at it holistically. But if you say, oh, my job has to give me, you know, this amount of fulfillment and um, passion and it's supposed to satisfy me and in, in intellectually and socially and in all these other ways then maybe it's just not gonna work for you but that doesn't mean it's not possible in your life you just have to diversify where you're getting what from does that make sense like look at your whole life holistically and your whole day or you know what you do over the span of like a month or even a week and say okay what am i missing is there not enough time for social activities is there not enough time for you know self-care just doing something alone or time to just do nothing and you can kind of fit in little pieces and say okay from everything this whole like pie graph of what's important to me in life being you know friends family um learning things growing as a person eating well working out if those are all the things that are important to you how can you fit that in your life over the course of a week or a month that still keeps you fulfilled but it's not all coming from one place um so investigate you know that what you're what you feel like you're missing and how you can put that back in your life but then also look at you know if you're boxing yourself into a certain industry or salary, like I was saying, and realize that there can be limiting beliefs that you have about work and that we all probably have those ideas about work, but it's important to just start a brain dump, right? Just start like a, a writing down everything that you believe, whether it's good or bad. Don't worry about writing affirmations. Just write everything that you've ever thought about money and working and finding a job. And when you write all of that stuff down and you don't second guess it, you don't think about it, you just let it all flow, you'll realize how many limiting beliefs you probably have and how many fears you've developed from this whole process, right? And once you know those fears, you can start to confront them and you can start to work towards them head on. But if you don't know what you're afraid of and you don't know how you're holding yourself back, then you also don't know how to move forward. And along with that, you know, you're going to probably have to go through some trials and tribulations along the way, right? None of us find if you are looking for that perfect job or you are looking for, you know, reaching a certain level of expertise in your industry, that's not going to happen overnight, right? There's so many um, trials and tribulations that come along with it. And even Marie Forleo and Tim Ferriss, two of like my favorite people in the self-help world have talked about, you know, how many times they gotten rejected, how many times a certain book proposal has been turned down before that same book proposal went and like made the New York Times bestseller list, right? Sometimes you just need to believe in yourself and sometimes you do need to go through ups and downs and timing has a lot to do with it as well. So just realize, you know, that even if you have goals and even if you are dead set on something that it's going to happen for you, you just cannot give up and it might change, you know, it, it might look differently in your life. It might look differently from what you ever thought, but being open to different opportunities can really, really help you. But you can't be open if you're filled with fear and you just want to stay where it's comfortable and you just want to, you know, not think about it or not deal with it. Like you really do have to confront it head on and say, you know, I'm going to negotiate for this salary or I'm going to, even though I'm happy where I am, I realize that there's no growth for me here. There's no opportunity for a raise or a promotion so I need to go somewhere else and sometimes you can use that as leverage where you already work you know there's so many different ways as long as you think creatively and out of the box that you can kind of 
find a way to to figure out how you can better your current situation. Um, so, you know, you can always look at things in steps, like maybe you don't have, you know, sort of degree you need, but maybe you have five years of experience. So how can you leverage that? Or how can you use the recommendations that you have from a job in a different industry to prove that you have the transferable skills needed to move into a new space or a new industry? Can you use other connections? Is there a way that you can forge a new path? Do you need to turn to social media? Do you need to maybe do it on your own? Um, you know, there's so many different ways that you can get your end goal across if that is really what you're dedicated to, but you have to, you know, find that um, on your own. And um, something that, you know, I, I think is really important in this whole process and especially with the job search and everything, like all your, usually you only hear from a job if you get it or you don't hear it all or you hear constant no's and it only takes one yes, but it could take 50 no's to get to that one yes, right? So the whole job process is pretty much like you just getting rejected after putting yourself out there and that's really hard to deal with over a long period of time, right? So having good support systems is really essential and you know even right now I have you know so many friends that I'm talking to that are just like you know what it's it's going to be okay you can figure this out like you still have all these good things about you and you know your job isn't everything and same with you know my parents and just finding other people that I can talk to and connect with that remind you you know what you what's so great about yourself and on the flip side of that I've also been really finding that love in myself that I have for other people um, and expressing that and something that's not something that I usually do when I feel really anxious or scared but I'm telling you that loving uh, other people has been one of the best ways that I've found myself in this process and that I've been able to realize that there are good things about me because I'm sharing that I'm expressing that into the world I'm putting it out there and I'm encouraging other people just as as I'm being encouraged and sometimes those people aren't even asking for it but I'm here to do that because I'm capable of loving I'm here to love and to show other people that they can be great and so when I do those things even if that has nothing to do with my direct job search I'm still able to um, realize what's good about myself. So I hope that this video helped you. If you have any co questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, my battery is about to die, so I'm just going to end this really quickly. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.